Prime Minister, good to see you. Thank you for making the time. Thanks for having me on, Vashi. I, I want to start off just by delineating between permanent residents and temporary ones. On the latter, is your government going to, even temporarily while the housing crisis is so acute, cap the number of international students and or temporary foreign workers? Well, it's, it's something we're going to look at in the first quarter, first half of this year, Vashi. Uh, that volume is disconcerting. Uh, it, it's really a system that has gotten out of control. And it's a conversation that we need to have with the provinces to make sure that the provinces that have not been doing their jobs actually rein in those numbers on, on, a, on a pure volume basis. There's a challenge to the integrity of the system, and it comes with, um, with, with, with institutions that have been leveraging the fact that there has been this permissive designated learning institution model and getting people from outside the country paying a premium dollar to come to Canada and not necessarily getting the education that they were promised. So. Um, that's something I think to look out for in the first quarter, first half of this year. And I do take your point on the, the role of provinces here, but I remember four or five months ago, this issue was already being discussed at the cabinet table, at the cabinet retreat in PEI. I was there covering it. And the, the idea that over the last two years, those numbers had exploded, post-pandemic in particular, was already on your table as immigration minister. Why are you only now starting to look at the prospect of a cap when you talked about floating it months ago? Well, I think we need to get our own house in order federally. Uh, we need to be doing our jobs in making sure that we have a system that actually makes sure people have the financial capability to come to Canada, that we're actually verifying offer letters. So really getting our, 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 our house in order and then looking at this in a little more granularity, looking at where provinces have not necessarily uh, had robust discussions with their designated learning institutions, particularly those that are profiting off the system. The steps that I announced in the fall we're very much preliminary in making sure the federal government was doing its job and now it's time for us to have a conversation about the volumes and the impact that that is having in certain areas uh, for example on housing it isn't the one-size-fits-all solution to addressing all of the housing problems in Canada um, but this is certainly in some areas contributing to some of the, the, the pressure that we're seeing and yeah. it needs to be it needs to be fixed in short order. And I'm certainly not insinuating that it is one size fits all but the Canadian press report for example that came out this week showed that you did not you specifically because you weren't in that portfolio but that your government had in its uh, in its uh, you know world in its level of awareness documents from bureaucrats that showed that the kind of immigration that you were targeting would have a tangible impact on uh, a salient impact on housing affordability and and we know the the impact you know it's supply yes for sure your government is now doing things about supply but two years ago you weren't doing the things that you're doing now why didn't you m heed the warning in the in that uh, in those documents well, I'm not so sure that we didn't. Those discussions around the cabinet table are very robust when it comes to immigration levels. Different cabinet ministers have different views and we discuss a whole number of things. We, we, we paid civil servants handsomely for their expertise in telling us all the things that could go right and could go wrong. And in this case, housing is one of them. As a country, we're facing a bit of a conundrum like our, like our partners in the G7 or the G20 in, in aging populations, particularly in the workforce. Tony Gravello, the Bank of Canada, have said quite clearly that Canada stands uh, first in, in, in having been able to reduce the average age of that workforce because of immigration. So those demographic challenges, which are generational ones and not sort of electoral ones, are ones that we, we find are, are extremely important and, and our government has done a good job in doing that. Has it been perfect? No, it hasn't. Have we made mistakes? Absolutely. And I think when, we, when it comes to housing, uh, this is a federal government that since 2015 has made historic investments that haven't been done for 30 years this is not a problem that arose a couple of years ago it's been happening for 30 years but respectfully if even i do the simple math and i look at the stats can data from just last month the net increase in non-permanent residents in just the third quarter a record since 1971 was 312,758 the total number of new homes that your government has announced over the all the announcements you've made in the last year is 266,646 over 10 years, 6,500 over the next three years. It doesn't add up. That's just the new stuff. That's just from three months. That's the number of non-permanent residents that have come in. Yeah, and I think the, we, need, we need to talk about that because it doesn't mean that one permanent resident equates to one house. And we've heard these horrific stories of people with 15 people that are in, in the same house. Um, there are spouses that have posted that have that have work permits as well that live with other people. So it it, it is uh, it is not the case that it is a one to one ratio. 
but certainly not volume is volume and that impact is, is not insignificant. Um, we're not necessarily talk, talking about discretionary in, my, in the top of my mind of, of, of non-permanent residents. We're talking about people that are indispensable to the agricultural sector, some very ex, uh, expert talent that are coming from abroad that we can't get here that we bring in to do work. Uh, we're also talking about uh, Ukrainian, uh, Ukrainian people that are, that are fleeing aggression from Russia that are here in, in, a, in, a, in a, as 200,000 of which um, but that's not from the three. Sorry to interrupt. That's not from the. No, no, no. But that's not from the three months. The StatsCan uh, report from those three months was very clear that the that that number was primarily comprised of temporary foreign workers and international students. A very small portion was refugees at that point. I don't think anyone's proposing to provide uh, the federal government provide a house for every single non-permanent resident that comes in, but we need to address supply in a rational way, in a way where the federal government hasn't uh, hasn't done before, and that I think is what we've been doing over the last few months. Um, but it's clear that over the next quarter, the next uh, half year, that we need to have a serious conversation with uh, our partners in the provinces to rein in those, uh, those numbers that uh, really need to have a second look at. Am I to take from that that the federal government will impose a cap? Because I understand the cross-jurisdictional issues here, but what isn't cross-jurisdictional is your ability to impose a cap on international students. Is that what your government plans to do, to be clear? Well, we'll consider it, and we'll consider, continue to consider it. If provinces don't do their jobs, uh, we're ready. We're, we're ready to do it, and they don't. We don't have the same set of tools jurisdictionally that provinces have. They are best suited to take those measures, but we can take some very hard measures. Um, turning off the taps across the country can have some really perverse effect on some institutes of higher learning that really shouldn't be penalized for this. Um, but our tools are much more limited than what provinces have in, at their disposition to go in and. Uh, shut down the equivalent of diploma of, of, of you know puppy mills in uh, in Brampton, Mississauga, that are rife and you know should have been addressed a couple of years ago when the Ontario Auditor General came out with um, with a report with a number of recommendations around that. Uh, that just needs to get done, and um, and we're we're pretty we're pretty much ready to use our weight if provinces aren't. What does that ma mean though in tangible terms? If there are let's say 800,000. Uh, international students here. Do you want to see that number cut in half, cut in a quarter? Like, at what point does, do you all of a sudden go in with the heavy hand? Well, we have a sense of what those numbers would look like, what the reduction of those numbers would look like, out of courtesy to my colleagues in the provinces. Those are discussions that we're first going to have around the negotiating table. Um, it's not something that I would ventilate publicly uh, on a Sunday morning, but something I think that we need to we need we need to show that we're serious about, and we actually need to get it done to reduce those numbers. I guess I, I have respect for the privacy of those conversations, but I also have respect for Canadians who are wondering how serious your government is about this. Again, these conversations have been going on for a long time. These numbers have been going up for years. Uh, the federal government did have in its purview the ability to use a cap for a long time. I'm just asking at what point, and, and look, you don't have to give me, you know, 600,000, 400,000, but do you want to see a substantial decrease through the provincial actions that could take place? And then will you, like, at what point will you come in? It's not clear to me, I think. Well, again, I think we have to talk about the housing crisis because there's two elements to it. There's supply and there's affordability. One is driven by, uh, both are driven by interest rates. Uh, supply is, is, is dealt with funding that should have been invested by uh, provinces, territories, and the federal government. And we need to all collectively do a better job about it. The strategic immigration review But I'm review asking you about demand. With my, sorry, sorry? I'm asking you about the demand side of the equation. I understand the, the, the role well, that's Well, look, on, on, on the demand side of the equation, again, to the extent that it's that it's that it, there's a causation relationship there's certainly a correlation um, it will have a limited effect but I think a significant effect in those communities where you have seen large spikes of international students um, and, and those where uh, you know the large influx of students where rates go up uh, rental rates go up cost of housings go up people convert their houses to to welcome students that you will see and there you will see an effect um, whether that will be felt across the country is highly uncertain, but certainly in areas where there has been the largest abuse, um, you will see, an, I, I think you will see an effect on housing. Again, this is contingent on interest rates and it's contingent on a number of other factors. Okay, I'm out of time, Minister. I do appreciate your time as always. Thank you. Thank you, Vashi.